Hey, small groups. Hey, super group. Thank you so much for tuning in um, to this recap. So Josh talked about a lot of things this past weekend, all the signs of what it may look like that the end times are near. Um, and he shared a birth story, and it brings me back to one of my birth stories. Um, we had our third daughter uh, in an unexpected way. I was in labor at home, and I you know, was at the doctor earlier that day, and they sent me home and said, hey, it's going to be a while. Maybe in a few more days you can come back. And so labor didn't end up starting at home, and I just kind of kept ignoring the signs because I thought, ah, I have time. I've got a ton of time on my hands. And so uh, 3 a.m. hit, and I woke my husband up because I thought this is, this is a little too intense. Maybe we should go in. And he ended up delivering our third daughter uh, in her home because we didn't make it in time. And that's what happens when you ignore the signs that labor is on its way and labor is happening. Uh, you get a surprise delivery of your baby girl in, at your home. Uh, but similarly, we have signs, and Josh talked about all of these signs, it's a lot of them, that Jesus is coming back. Um, he's made it abundantly clear to us because he's a good God that, and he loves us and he doesn't want us to be left um, without an idea of when he's coming. Um, and I love that. I love that it speaks to the character of God. So maybe in your groups for a second, would you pause and just talk about what kind of God, what kind of person would give you signs that they're coming back? What does that speak about God's character? My friend that was in labor uh, uh, before us, years before us, I remember talking to her, hey, what, what was it like What was you know, when you had your baby? And she said, you know, I always remembered being so thankful that uh, each labor pain, there was a break in between. And, and you, could, you can be, that was doable to me, um, that you got a break in between the contractions. And I thought, what a sweet way to look at that, rather than saying like labor is so intense, it's the worst thing in the world, but to say, uh, to find the sweetness in that and, and the beauty in that of, of, yep, it's intense, but you get a little break in between. And similarly, I think um, this could seem overwhelming if we're not tethering it to the character of who God is. But we have a God that loves us um, and wants to give us signs, and, and that points to his graciousness towards us, that he doesn't want to leave us unaware of his plans and, and what he's doing, that he wants us very much to know what's happening. Um, I love that. And so even now in your groups, I would love for you to talk a second about the way God meets you in those places, in those unexpected times or those hard times. What is the character or, or the quality of God that you find yourself attaching to most or grasping to most as your anchor in those times um, of chaos and hectic? Because they're there, I think we just need to pause for a second and see them. And so back to the signs. Um, Jesus is coming. And there were a lot of signs that we talked that uh, Josh talked about. Increased wickedness. Um, Increased gospel reach, um, the word of God getting out to everywhere, uh, every corner of the globe. He talked about um, a lot of false prophets and different religions that claim to know the way. All that to say, um, Josh ended with asking us, um, how does all of this, this big picture that he just painted, how does that impact how we live today? If you're going back to the birth and labor story, because it's such a good example, but when you know labor's coming, you do things ahead of time. You pack a bag for the hospital. If you have kids at home, you probably arrange child care because you know at some point you're gonna need to call on somebody, whether it's the middle of the night or, or it's all planned. Um, you need somebody to watch your other kids while you go have your new baby. There are little things that you do. If it's your first baby, you'd probably take uh, classes on birth preparation and how to work through labor if you want to do that. Um, and so there's little things that we can do that prepare us. And similar in this season, um, this isn't a season where we just kind of sit and watch by the window waiting for somebody to come to our house. This is a season where we, where we intentionally um, dig into God's word. Don't miss the disciplines uh, of walking with Jesus. We call them disciplines because they're meant to uh, boost us and strengthen us and help us get ready for when we put the, that faith into action. So reading your Bible. Um, spend some time in God's Word. You don't have to make a, a plan to read the whole thing, but what it, would it look like to read a chapter a day? Um, memorizing some scripture so that you're ready and you have His Word hidden in your heart. Spending some intentional time in prayer. These are all little things that we get to do and that we should be doing that prepare us for um, the times when life is hard, um, when it feels like evil is increasing and we don't quite know what to do about that. Um, it's our intentional faith that, that walks us through that. But we get the opportunity to strengthen that by how we walk alongside of God. And so right now at your tables, I would love for you or your group, I would love for you to talk about um, where you need a boost in, in regards to the prepping for, for the end times. Is it that intentional time with Jesus? Is it reading his word? Um, is it praying? 
Where is it that if you, someone were to give you just an added dose of it, you would say, oh, I want it in this area? Um, and what would that look like? And how would you handle tomorrow with that? What, what are you going to do throughout your day so that you can get that prayer time? Maybe it's waking up a little bit earlier. Chances are it's probably going to bed a little bit earlier so you can wake up and have that time. Maybe turning the, t off, the TV off uh, one episode earlier than you normally would have so you can have some more time with Jesus. But whatever that is, I would love for you to talk about that in your groups. Um, as well, to, that you're ready and that you have a plan of action. Um, because similar to how we, we work out and, and we uh, go to the gym or we stay uh, in shape um, if we're in a sport, we do that because we know at some point game day is coming and we don't want to miss that. And we want our bodies to be ready we, because we want to win. We want to play to win. And this is similar. Um, Christ won it for us. Christ won it all and the battle's already won. But we want to be those that persevere. And that means that we exercise our faith in season and out of season. In times when it feels like life is good, um, because the times that in life is hard, that's when your faith really, that rubber hits the road. Um, and so don't miss this as an opportunity to prepare. Um, this is a gift. This time is a gift and it's a blessing. Um, and we need to walk in that and see it as that. And that just takes intentionality on our part. I love you guys. I am so excited that you're diving into these discussions and this time. This is a great um, series that I think really impacts how we view today and how we view tomorrow and how we view the rest of our lives. So don't miss the opportunity that is here for us. I'm praying for your conversations that there's authenticity and honesty um, and that you're met with a safe place to land because that's what we love for you in these small groups and these super groups. So I love you guys. Enjoy your time together and I'm praying for you.